Now, in last video, we had two stocks, and we calculated for each stock a certain return and standard deviation given a probability of a state of economy. But here we have a portfolio, and we have a proportion. We're holding 40% A, 60% B. So for expected return, we multiply stock A and B estimated returns times the weight times the probability. That means for recession, stock A, 0.45 times minus 0.05 times this gives us the return just for that position in the rectangular range. We need to add all of them, so we sum. And there we go. There's the expected return for this portfolio. Now, for standard deviation, we actually have to calculate the expected return if the state of the economy occurs. Then we subtract the mean, square it, and multiply it times probability, add to get variance, square root to get standard deviation. So we'll take all the stocks, A and B, times the weights. Now, if I spill this, I need to add this row by row. So of course, that's where we use by row and comma sum. By the way, before by row, when we did standard deviation, we'd have to use matrix algebra to add row by row from a rectangle. But now we simply use by row. From that, to get deviation, we subtract the mean or the expected return. We need to square those deviations. So we put that in parentheses. Carrot 2 times the probabilities. Now I spill that, but if I add F2, simply sum, we get variance. But there's always a squared unit problem with variance, even though it's a measure of risk. F2, so we take the square root to get rid of the squared unit problem, and bam, that's standard deviation. That's our estimation for risk of this portfolio of stocks.